right, let's go ahead now. It's uh, Tuesday, Tuesday around lunchtime, uh, February 9th, here in the sports barn. I'm back. We're back. We're, we're still here. We're still here. Eric, once in a while, known as the Big E Arnold, here in my frozen studio, uh, unheated sports barn. And we're going to get you, what do we got, eight picks? Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight picks for Tuesday. Uh, now that we can, you know, I'm starting to get the, my wife said, you have to get your, get your enthusiasm back. She's right. I mean, you know, it's just no fun coming out here making these videos when it's just loss after loss after loss. Um, but, you know what? We've got four weeks left until the conference tournaments. Then that they'll determine who goes to Indianapolis. It's, I guess it's all going to be played in Indiana this year. And then you got the dance. And you know, I'm, I'm you got to love March Madness. Fans, no fans, you still got to love March Madness. I'm excited about it. You know, I've got a number of reasons to be excited about it. I mean, did you see my team, Ohio State, last night? These guys are good. These guys are actually good. You know, I, I, I know you're thinking, well, what's that do for me? Well, if you think uh, you're not an Ohio State fan, probably nothing. But, you know, I'm giving you reasons why I'm enthused. Um, Gonzaga could be the first team since 1976 to go undefeated. I was looking at their record today, and I thought, these guys have beaten people. Uh, they beat Illinois. They beat I think beat Baylor. I, I, I'm going by memory. I know they beat Virginia. Yeah, they right there. That's you know with a, pretty much three of the top conferences, and they've beaten some of the best teams in them. So you know uh, Gonzaga could run the table. Uh, and that would be pretty exciting, I guess. Pretty significant. Uh, my wife likes Gonzaga, so I figure that's good for me if they win. Uh, but let's put it this way. It's not bad. It, it, it may not be good, but it's certainly not bad. All right. Well, let's, let's, let's finish up the football season and be done with it, right? Uh, of course, the tire was wrong. Uh, perhaps rolling tires down the hill is not a smart way to do anything. So that was wrong. It, it, I'm hoping next year football's back to normal. It actually was good at that at one point in time. You know, we're hoping to get our confidence back, you know. Uh, we, we did get this right. I felt good about that. We got the under right. You know, that's something we'll look for next year. That uh, maybe look a, maybe we'll look for that more, you know, that these, you know, how many times did you see guys slip and fall in the Super Bowl? You know, the grass fields, and uh, it's a little wet, it's a little humid, and whoop, down the guy goes. Uh, you know, under, under, under. You know, so maybe we'll look for that next year. Uh, the prop bets, um, the national anthem really was our only loser. Um, the Belichick was a tie. I only heard him say it once. I mean, I was paying pretty close attention. The rest I figured were all winners. Um, so, you know, like I said, the, the outrageous big on the uh, prop bets, you're not going to make money. It's just something to have fun with. So, that's the end of the Super Bowl. Um, Philadelphia Eagle news. Again, uh, the barn sits in eastern Pennsylvania, so we have to be aware of the uh, Philadelphia sports scene. Carson Wentz. I was told Sunday that he was gone. You know, I was promised by my brother, who has appeared on a few of these videos, that he was gone, that the Eagles had had a deal, they were going to trade him, and you know, here it is, midday Tuesday, and he's still here. He's still here. You know, so I, my fantasy deal is that he gets shipped to Chicago. We get, I don't care what we get, as long as we get back Nick Foles. That's what I want. I want the chosen one. I want the man that won me a Super Bowl. I don't care that he hasn't done well anywhere else. He's, he's the man here. He is the chosen one in Philadelphia. So uh, that's what I'm hoping. You know, I did. 
I don't care if they get, you know, nothing back. I, fuck, I, they, hell, I'd pay. I would pay them to get them back. But, you know, that's crazy to me. So, you know, whatever they can get for wine, they should make the deal. The guy has no value. He can't play. I'm pretty sure I said that. See, that's some, some of the things I've been struggling with is I'll have a take. It'll be right. And I don't follow through on it. I bet I lost more games this year on the Eagles than won, despite the fact I know I said in the preseason special, this team stinks. <laughs> Here they go 4 11 and 1, and I somehow lost on the Eagles. It's like, you said they stunk. Why did you keep playing them? It's like, uh, that's a good question. But, you know, that's what we're trying to do is, you know, follow through with a take. And say, okay, I said they were good. Now that means we have to stick with them. Or I said they were bad. That means we need to fade them, regardless of trends and models and all that other stuff. All right, enough of that. Let's get to college basketball here. I, I, I don't even remember the last time we played. I think it was, oh, last week or something. I think we had one win, four losses, and I just, you know, couldn't take it anymore. And, and so we've been kind of resetting our mind a little bit, if you will. And I don't know if that'll work. I really don't. But uh, we're trying to follow our tried and true principles of the model. And uh, let's see what we got. Uh, early game here, uh, Notre Dame down at Duke. I, you know, seven and a half. I don't care much for the Notre Dame coach. But then on the other hand, what has Mike Krzyzewski done lately other than lose? So I think the coaching matchup is for the most part a wash. Um, Duke beat Notre Dame up in the uh, South Bend earlier this year. Uh, but it was a pretty close game. And you know, right now, Duke just, you know, who can they beat? Yeah, so we're getting seven and a half points here. I'm thinking that's a little bit of value there. I stopped putting the stars up just because I have no confidence in any of these picks. Unless otherwise noted, they're all one star. They're all one star. So we'll take Notre Dame. Uh, we have Dayton at home getting a point and a half. I, honestly, I don't even remember the rationale for that one. I know we went back and forth, back and forth on it, and I just came down with Dayton. So, you know, there's some good handicapping for you, basically flipping a coin. Dayton plus point and a half. Alabama minus the six at South Carolina. Um, you know, Alabama had a bad loss. But, well, was it a bad loss? I mean, they lost to the second place team in the SEC on their court. So is that a bad loss? I don't know. I don't think it's that bad. I know this. They were way behind. And they made a hell of a charge in the last five minutes. Yeah, I was watching, sort of kind of watching that game. I was actually at a BW3s. And, you know, I'm looking around, I'm clearing around, and, whoa, Alabama's within, like, uh, you know, five points. My wife's telling me a story about uh, uh, her uh, cousin or something, and I'm kind of like, yeah, all right. I, well, that, that's terrible. I mean, I, yeah, what? And, you know, I'm watching the game. So... They charged all the way back and almost got there, but then they couldn't quite close the deal. So I'm thinking Alabama maybe just had, you know, a bad 30 minutes of basketball there, and now they're back on the back on the line. Um, they got a two-game lead over Missouri with about seven to go. So they, they need to win. You know, and if do they do stuff like that in college sports? In other words, they only played Missouri once. Missouri won. They got the tiebreaker. So will they both hoist the banners up there? Or would Missouri hoist the banner on the strength of the tiebreaker? Uh, they, you know, unknown things. So Alabama, I figure, you know, they're motivated, I would think, you know, to go out and uh, play hard against South Carolina. So we'll lay the six. They, they've been good all year. They've been gold all year. So, all right. Arkansas, Kentucky. Arkansas has just been owned, owned, owned. That's from Slapshot. By Kentucky over the recent past. 
We like Arkansas's coach. They've been owned by Kentucky, though. My God. Kentucky's only a one-point favorite here. We're taking Arkansas. You know, if Arkansas was ever going to beat Kentucky, this is the year. Arkansas has a better team than Kentucky. Uh, they probably should be favored by more than one point. Or, well, they should probably be favored, period. They're actually getting a point. Like I said, if, it, if Arkansas was ever going to beat Kentucky, this is the year. We're, we're going to try to start acknowledging what appears to be that Duke is not very good. Kentucky is not very good. Uh, North Carolina is not very good. Kansas is just so-so. Uh, the, the, these super teams, Michigan State, not very good. All these super teams that we have to worship year after year after year aren't that good this year. Uh, so that leads us uh, to our next game. That we're taking Penn State. Penn State getting three and a half over Michigan State. I mean, look at that. That's the Pomeroy ranking, 30. Penn State's ranked 30. Michigan State's ranked 62. And Michigan State's a three and a half point favorite. It, 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 I'll take Penn State. I mean, I know it's probably a giant trap. And then all of a sudden now, you know, the Izzo, Izzo isms will come out or whatever, the Izzo magic, and he'll make Michigan State a super team tonight. Uh, but I don't know. I saw Penn State play at Columbus. We're one of the best teams in the country. They gave us all kind of trouble. We were lucky to win that game. Uh, we, we, Ohio State, we. Um, I watched the game against Maryland. Uh, Penn State just suffocated those guys. Uh, so, I think Penn State's pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good team. Uh, they've got a pretty good uh, three, what are they, forward slash guard rotation of upperclassmen. Uh, Penn State? All right, this will be, I guess, the game of the night, the West Virginia-Texas Tech rematch. Uh, if you were fortunate enough to watch the first game in Morgantown, great game. Uh, Mac McClung hitting the jumper with uh, no time. Or no, I got that wrong. Um, the West Virginia kid hit the jumper with no time left. Uh, McClung had scored earlier, take the lead, and then the West Virginia kid came back down, hit the shot, won the game. West Virginia, the one-point winner. So now Texas Tech trying to get their revenge. Um, this line looks high at five and a half in that we kind of figure these teams are about equal. Uh, so how much is the home court worth? You know, it, 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 without fans, probably not much. Uh, but, but West Virginia historically has been a lousy road team in the Big 12 for whatever reason. Bob Huggins doesn't seem to travel well. Uh, so I think we're just going to go on the basis of that. We're going to say Texas Tech gets their vengeance. Uh, they're going to cover the five and a half, we say, uh, that this game is not going to be quite that close. Uh, and uh, we'll say Texas Tech gets it done by more than five and a half. And what else we got here? And then late night, we got Creighton. They got beat by Georgetown a couple weeks ago at Omaha. They got beat. So now they're coming back. You know what? Do it again, Patrick Ewing. I need to see that again. If you can do it again, you're a daisy. But I'll take Creighton to um, be motivated, be there, be ready. That's an explosive team. I've said that before. That's why seven and a half doesn't really bother me. If Creighton's on, they're going to score. They're going to get 80, 90 points. And uh, I think they'll cover that number. So we'll take Creighton there. And then lastly, the late night game for, uh, are you sure about that? Because uh, he's up at that hour, so he needs some action. Uh, we'll take New Mexico. We'll take the big underdog. Uh, 17 and a half points. Uh, this is, a, I think, the time of year where uh, the uh, favorites might be just coasting a little bit. Uh, the huge favorites. Uh, and New Mexico might go in there and uh, just be able to give them a game in the first of the... I guess this is one of these back-to-back -back games. So in the uh, game one of the set, New Mexico goes in there hard. 
gives it their best game, hopes to make it, you know, make a game out of it. Then probably Colorado will win the second game by 50. But uh, we'll take New Mexico in this first uh, of the back-to-backs. So that's what we got there for you. I think we're going to be a little more active now. You know, it's 10 degrees outside, so that's kind of part of what makes me not too enthused about making these videos right now. I mean, I, I honestly will be sitting there at like midnight, like I should go shoot a video, and then I'll be thinking, it, it, it's 10 degrees out there. I, I just don't know I want to go out there. <laughs> so we're going to get more out to you. We, we, we'll do our best. Let's show you this. Okay. And there we go. You know, we can't even get into the barn. We're plowed in. You know, it took me 10 minutes just to get in the damn barn to shoot this video. But let's see if we can. All right. Well, focus. There we go. I think that's pretty clear. Well, if you like the video, hit the like button. As I said, we'll try to get more content to you. I think we're going to start focusing more on pics and less on goofery. And have the, you know, I've got like three people that like the goofery and, uh, you know, they hit the like button and that's great. But then, you know, the number of people actually watching the videos is going down to about six. So we're going to try to focus more on the college basketball. So good. We're going to have a good six weeks coming up, right? Thanks for being here. We'll talk again. Signing off. And we're still here because I have my gloves on. Shining off.